Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Never mind the bridge on the... Ah! Ah! <laughs> no! <laughs> Quickly! It's classic movie banter! <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> so, Nathan. Look. Are you loving social media these days? It's a... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is this is a funny show because I'm going to start off the show by saying this. Yes, I have a complicated relationship with, oh. with, with social media. I kind of imagine just you and everything like you're going grocery shopping, Brenton, and you're like, which banana should I buy? And you're like, oh, it's so complicated. Like, is it la- Ladyfinger or is it just? <laughs> 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 uh, but you know, okay. So me and social media, I'm having like a mixed. Like, I love it. I think. Um, you know, it's it's good that we can share the exciting things happening in our lives. But I'm getting serious FOMO at the moment. I don't know about you, but like it's that time of year where everyone is traveling. Mm. Like, you know, yeah. it's just, you know, we're in August, you know, it's just, it's that time of year where just everyone's just going about, you know. Or, yeah, and here's the thing. Everyone's just traveling and I feel like I'm missing out here in Sydney. Now, Sydney's great. But recently, I've been bumping into people out who are tourists, and they keep trying to convince me why Sydney's great. Now, you've been here for a couple of years, right? Are you, are you like still excited when you see the Opera House and that kind of stuff? It depends. Like sometimes, sometimes, sometimes if it's a nice night and I'm um, I'm out and about and I'm walking through Circular Quay and yeah, I yeah, see yeah. the old Opera House and mm-hmm. I, you know, it it. It tickles a heartstring somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah, of course. But other times, I couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, imagine, I imagine you don't give a fuck at all, Brenton. But, like, I don't know, do you ever meet, like, tourists who come to Sydney? Like, yeah. Like, you bump into them? And what do yeah. they say to you? Oh, they... Do the funny voice. <laughs> well, first, it depends. If they're, if they're into, uh, people from another country, sometimes they'll mock your accent mm-hmm. and mock the, the grand way we greet each other and call each other mate. Yes. Uh, they don't. Yeah. So they'll they'll mock that for a little and have a little bit of a laugh. Mm. But yeah, it's interesting because I think as a tourist, even when I first came to Sydney, <laughs> when I first come to this country, <laughs> <laughs> I learned the way of the koala. The way of the koala the is an the... important way, Nathan. Don't mock the koala. <laughs> it's just mostly sleep and eating. <laughs> <laughs> That's mostly. Yeah, it, it is a great way. It is a great way. If you if you love the way of the koala, like. More all, power to you. All respect to you. But I don't know. Do you ever get like? Do you ever get like tourists? Like, cause I was out the other night and I met some uh, folks who were over, from overseas, and they're like, "Oh, have you? You know, have you done Luna Park? And have you done, you know, Manly and all that kind of stuff?" And they're just like ticking off boxes. I'm like, mm. and as a local, you just want to be like, "Oh yeah, no, nah, there's like so much more to Sydney than just like the big like attractions and that kind of stuff." And like, I feel like if. Mm. Like if I was like when I go overseas and I meet locals and that kind of stuff and I have the, those same conversations, am I going to look like that guy who knows nothing about anything? Yeah, I think I think it's interesting because even when I first moved here, I don't I don't think there is much to Sydney as as strange <laughs> as that sounds. Every time I see someone on social media, I come to Sydney. They always do like the classic photo where they're standing at like Circular Quay. They get the thing in the background. But then you don't see afterwards that they take the photo. There's nothing to do. Let, let's say this. There's some impressive feats of architecture. Yes. There's some nice <laughs> beaches. Some nice beaches. Yes. But not as nice as other beaches, I'd argue, in this country. Yes. Um, there's a harbour. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> it's there. It exists. And then it's just like a regular... It's like a regular old city. It is. Yeah. <laughs> just a regular old city. Just, yeah. Just us in Sydney City. No, I, I agree. Like, I don't know. I feel like also, like, yeah, sure, there are better places in a show to go if you're a tourist. But, like, what, me anyway, me on social media right now, I'm just going through everyone's feeds, uh, well, through my feed, and I'm seeing everyone's posts and that kind of stuff, and they're in, you know, they're in the Malfi Coast, and, mm. you know, they're saving orphans in Africa, and, you know, they're climbing Everest, and all that, all that mm. cool stuff. And I don't know, like, I... I, me being here, I'm just feeling like I, I'm i wondering if I were to go overseas and get the cool photos and that kind of stuff, if that would make me feel like fulfilled as like I'd be at home. You know what I mean? Like there's a part of me that wants to go overseas and be like, yeah, like I'm just going to, you know, milk as much as I can out of the space. There's the other half of me that thinks this is all going to be artificial. And then, you know, the only thing I'll have when I come back home is just a handful of photos and like generic stories. Well, all I'll say is it's about intention. And if you're going somewhere, if you're going across the globe to anywhere, or even to just another town out of Sydney or wherever you live. Mm. If you go in there to get a 
nice Instagram shot and put a filter on it. Like, <laughs> there are people who do do that. Though. I, like, I do realize like, that, but but I feel like you gotta live, you gotta travel for the real experiences, like a real, <laughs> the real life, world, like a real life <laughs> Get experience. Get nice and dirty. Yeah, meet some locals, have some fun chats, have some mm. nice banter. Oh yeah. That's, that's the see thing. some sites like you know interact with people learn some stuff do mm. plan things but don't plan things at the same time plan some things and when you're not planning things go out and explore mm. uh, it's I because I did a similar thing where I, a couple of years back I went to New Caledonia right yes and this is um, back when I was learning French and so you know New Caledonia if you, uh, you know much about it as a country it, like it, the, the thing it's most known for from a touristy point of view is like the city of Numea mm. and it's beaches and like it's, it's, it's sailing and it's coastal reefs you know it's got like a very you know classic you know um, Oceana kind of vibe to it all lovely because it's in Oceana Brenton mm. and uh <laughs> um, and when I was there, like when I I went there twice, and each time I did a homestay, and I got more out of like just having genuine chats to like people who live there about just like not even about new cow stuff, just about mm. like just like little daily things, just like mm. how they prefer gardening and how they prefer. I don't know, like smoking cigarettes at the back of the school or something like that, as mm. opposed to like what they do here because it realized that even though everything looks and sounds different there's so much similarity and it sounds yeah. like so like it's like you're like yeah Nath we know we know this is what you discover when you travel but like I feel like if you go overseas and you're just there for exactly yeah like the photos and that kind of stuff then you get nothing out of it and not to and not to say that's bad not to say the photo sides of it or sharing stuff like that online is bad because the, at the end of the day that's how we <laughs> you gotta bring your light count up somehow but also like that's <laughs> you how need we the so, that's, that's part of the way we socially interact nowadays is you know yeah. it used to be letters it used to be telegrams it you see, you know, this changes throughout history in terms of what technology allows us to do and so like yeah there's lots of benefits to social media but you actually have to have the experiences a genuine experience to give mm. a genuine post about something that then people genuinely react to do you prefer like like people who travel and instead of like doing like a photo on Instagram they'll do like a like a travel blog while they're travelling like oh, I, I love uh, travel vlogs <laughs> on, on YouTube and, and things nice. like that like they're great yeah, yeah. like when you they're good value yeah uh, especially when you're researching trips yourself like that's a good yeah. Yes. Like starting point to go to. Oh my god! Speaking of that, the POV pers- perspective um, videos on of like roller coasters and like thrill rides <laughs> from like the United States. Like, yeah. oh, if I if I I'll just get on a roll with those videos. Like some nights <laughs> I'll just be like, oh my god! Three what's, hours later, <laughs> what's what what's that roller coaster must be like at Six Flags? And that's like there's the video, and I watch it, and I'm like, and I'm not experiencing it, but I want to, mm. and it's that that's it's that excitement of, of of seeing something and knowing that it exists and do you ever reckon like 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 the the digital experience will replace travel in a way like i hope i hope not i hope there's i hope I, I hope there when, is I still when, reason like, to, 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 to travel somewhere. It depends It depends where VR and, you know, mm. a, a virtual you're experience looking around takes and, you. like, you're in a location, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, I remember when, like, Street View, when we were kids, got introduced onto Google Maps. And, like... Yeah. And that was, like, <laughs> that was like huge. Do you remember that? I remember... That was craziness. I remember yes. being in the year four classroom. I don't think you and I were in the same class, but I remember being in the year four classroom and my teacher at the time, he was opening Google Maps and he was very excited because th- it just got introduced. Mm. And he's like, you can, you can act as though... He was like, he took us on, like, some random street in like I don't know Italy or something like that and it's like it's, it's like you're in Italy and he had it on like the projector and like he was just like zooming around it had nothing to do with like math or whatever we're supposed to be learning about <laughs> I remember that year as well we then went to the library or wherever there was the closest computer and we <laughs> Quick, would grab one <laughs> yeah, and we'd all look up our own street address and, and see our own houses oh yeah and you'd be it, showing it, off each other's houses yeah it was great and like Brenton I've been to your house before I'd be like no 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 no, no. look at this this is the virtual experience <laughs> whoa virtual whoa, house look at it just just oh, just let it buffer. Just let it load. Like, just uh, <laughs> try and turn to the right. There I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See that pixel? <laughs> it's me. I oh, no, I have to see them now. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, look. I I think it's a balance, as is everything. Like I think social media serves a purpose. Uh, people build careers and things online nowadays, and they that's do. and that's awesome. But we again, have friends who are Instagram models. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. we have a few actually from our grade who are it's, Instagram it, models. And the people I think that are successful at that, or even just like even just. It's all it's about me, by the sharing. Way, a, it's all about <laughs> sharing a genuine experience. I think. Yeah. And uh, even if it is your career, like people that are really successful uh, at these vlogs and things and online, I think mm. there's there's a certain there's a certain amount of you know of a genuine experience that they're having that they feel the reason to share with you. Yeah. Well, you know, like it's it's great to see people that are online personalities and they go out and meet fans at things or or even just meet a local and then like you know 
share this person with the world that mm. we would have never known. <laughs> so sharing more of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's almost like what we're doing, Brenton. Mm. It's almost like we're making a, a, a piece of art for a, a digital platform for oh. people for people to consume. <gasps> it's classic movie banter. Dun dun dun. Episode nine. What nine? What nine? It's a nine. One off the ten. Ooh. Nine. <laughs> hey. Hey. Hey, dude. How you doing? Oh, dude. I'm so good. Me yeah. too. I'm like, I'm waiting for a week where you and I aren't good because we normally go like, oh, yeah, we're so good. Well, but I like th- we just switch it on. We're so depressed. Hey, it's going to happen one yeah. of these days. And, oh, and, yeah. And, one of the, and that day, when, the, when it comes, we will note it. We will talk about it. And then we'll <laughs> move on and talk about it. Hopefully, it'll be a great movie we talk yeah. about. Uh, <laughs> we're watching like something like really comedic like Shrek or something. and then we're, But we're like, oh, gosh, you know, I had, had three friends die this week and I just got I just got ill and you know and I, I, I farted in front of a girl you know just all sorts of terrible things I like those like those three things there and you started with the worst and so it was three friends dead that's like oh like I I genuinely didn't know what to say to that second thing was I'm feeling a bit ill so that's bad like that's your health yeah and the third was I farted in front of a girl now, it, I guess that's perspective because some people would say that third one's the worst. But I... <laughs> <laughs> jokes, jokes, jokes. Uh, jokes, jokes, jokes. I would rather ha- be ill than fart in front of a girl I liked, to be honest with you. You'd rather cop like a seven-day, like, like, f- oh, like, I'm like I'm cold, not- let's say, like a little cold, Look, like a bit of a sniff- I'm snuggles, knock on wood. bit of congestion. I'm knock on wood. I'm very lucky that I have never been when i get colds i don't get sick for a full week like it's normally like a f- three four day affair same but <laughs> those three four days for me are quite bad oh yeah same yeah like yeah so uh, honestly like uh, if you if th- th- this fart would probably i'm a very bad farter i normally never do it but when i do it's like but, but what's your but what's I, I have to understand like relatively when you say good and bad because some people would say that a good fart's a real loud <laughs> crack <laughs> and, like, and, then, and then you know you're stating your fart in the room but it's just but it's a bad like scrap from my side you just the plant the icon and there's the crack <laughs> yeah exactly but yeah. a bad fart uh, from that person's perspective would be you know something that that you wouldn't even know exist had existed it, mine is that it uh, my farts cling to me so you may, they're sure they're silent but like when I drop a bomb they are uniquely like horrendously like smelling like they <laughs> they they smell like like rotten food that got like barfed up by like a sewer rat and like wow and and the rat like hasn't washed in five weeks and the Mm. rat you know has just been it's it's like the ugly brother in ratatouille it's like that kind of (laughs) rank and it clings to me and it's a terrible unique scent and so i can't avoid it and normally like if i do fart i'll like aim my ass towards the wall and trying to contain it but like it doesn't work and so (laughs) and and it'll just and then i'll walk to the other side of the room and the fart will follow me like some needy, needy friend and everyone will know. And I've I've started to reach the point, Brendan, where I own up to it. But but it doesn't get me the solace I need. I will say this to our listeners that the truth will set you free. And sometimes <laughs> it's better just to Brendan, just to I don't be I don't wanna I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna scare you, but I uh, sometime in this episode I may drop a bomb. And that's okay. <laughs> but no, I say that, I say that now. But, but when it comes to it again, we may we may or may not have to address it for our listeners at home. <laughs> Halfway through the episode, you just hear Brent and just go. <coughs> oh, oh, I will bring it up. But well, 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 before I die, fun. my dying breath will be Nathan, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and and then when I'm, when I say that, viewers and uh, viewers, listeners, when I say that, you will we'll know you. that one, I'm about to die, and two, it's because of Nathan's gas. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see, like a couple of weeks back when Sydney had like the gas leak in Martin Place, and like, oh, oh my goodness, that was all you, wasn't it, buddy? It was, it was literally me. Like they didn't want to say it on television because like people had to close down businesses and lose money. Yeah, and so if pe- if they revealed, oh yeah, it was Nathan that ended up finding. Well, people, people would be. You know, they'd, they'd, they'd be, be falling blood. They'd, they'd be. They'd want I would you in be prison murdered. They the would rest rest of their <laughs> life. Yeah. Just this one bloke just like comes in front of the TV cameras. Is like, look, it, 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 <laughs> it was. It was. It was a guy that walked past. He may have had a cheeky fart, and uh, you know, we don't want to point fingers, but 
We're not going to name <laughs> names. But it was Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> and and then like, next minute, <laughs> it's the scene maxi- from the, <laughs> Maximum it's the, Security. <laughs> it's the scene from the Simpsons movie where like they all riot at Homer's house. Like, yes. After he has the sinkhole or whatever. Yes. Like, yeah, like, just escape through the sinkhole. You'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just grab the housemates like, quick, <laughs> we're going to Melbourne. <laughs> Gosh, that's a great movie, but it's yeah. not 20 years old, so we can't talk no, about it. No, that film was like... But I'll tell you what we can talk about. What is that, Brenton? The Bridge Over the River Kwai. The Bridge on the River Kwai. I, oh, we had this discussion before before we start, We before we uh, viewed this film. We both thought for years that this film was called The Bridge <laughs> Over the River Kwai. It's called The Bridge on the River Kwai. No. And My by apologies, the way, everyone. Over's better, can I just point out? Like, oh, I we'll, like we'll, the We'll discuss like that when better. we get... Oh, we could do title talk now, I guess. Okay. Let's do well, title talk. Okay, before we even before we even talk before we even pitch the movie, let's just do title talk. Let's do talk. some title talk. Let's okay. do it. Okay, okay. So, uh, bridge on the river Kwai. I think it's it's an appropriate title, it's although a, it's a great title, but it could be better as we were discussing. <laughs> Look, there is a bridge on the river Kwai that is definitely a thing that happens, but uh, you know, I think I think a better title would be um, building a bridge on the river Kwai mm. or. River Kwai, does it have bridges? Question mm. mark. Or um or prisoners of war, how to make your time better. I have an interesting name that I that I was just thinking about. If yeah, this yeah. film came out today, it wouldn't it would not be called The Bridge on the River Kwai because okay. it's too long. Like <laughs> in, uh, what film really that has come out uh that has a title that that's that, that that's that long. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking uh and no, it's not because Alec Guinness played Obi Wan. Okay, but high ground, <laughs> and I mean that genuinely. <laughs> yeah, high ground. But given that the themes of this film that we'll get mm-hmm. into later, yeah, yeah, high yeah. ground, food for thought, high ground, high ground, high ground of the River Kwai. No, just the River Kwai doesn't get mentioned. No, it does. Just high ground. No, because it could be any old river that the, that you know the the working over. It's, couldn't it? I guess. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right. Yep. Yep. No, I, I agree with that. But this film <laughs> was released in 1957. 1957. That is 61 years old, isn't it? I think it is. Oh. It, it's older than both of us combined. Crikey! Oh dear! Quickly, get it in the ER. <laughs> it's it's failing. <laughs> so this one's an olden. That's this yeah. one is an olden. Uh, Nathan, mm-hmm. can you pitch me this movie? Okay. So welcome to my Hollywood exec office, Mister uh, Executive Person, whose office I'm currently in. My name is Barry Conrad. Hello, Barry Conrad. Yeah. I, I am screenwriter Nathan, and I'm here, I'm here to pitch you this movie I want to make. Okay. Okay. You've got two minutes. Shit. Okay. So, uh, it's set in the in 1942. It's World War Two in 1942, and uh, you're with the British, and they're all prisoners of wars, and you know morale's getting low. There's there's some violence, and and things are tough, and we're on the River Kwai in Thailand. Oh, so we're prisoners of wars of the Japanese. Yes, yes. the Japanese. Right. And this is a morality-boosting film that is sure to get the audiences of today pretty excited that, you know, uh, the British won the war because this is a film that shows the British just pushing through and, you know, achieving over adversity and building a bridge on the River Kwai to ship some Japanese things from point A to point B. And there's trials and tribulations. There's Alec Guinness muttering about. There's um, a lot of whistling. There might even be some singing in this film. And you know what? It's all filmed in panoramic. Cinemascope. In Cinemascope. Wow. So, if you love uh, guns and beautiful scenery and Alec Guinness looking a little bit worried and then a little bit happy, but then a little bit worried, then this is the film for you. Mm, good pitch. Thank good you. Good pitch. Well done. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> there's like one listener just applauding like by themselves in yeah. their home. <laughs> like there's, there's this slow clap happening <laughs> all around the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, pretty a pretty good pitch, I'd say. Thank uh, you. I, I'd say, yeah. Um, so, let's dive in. Let's take the deep dive. Okay. I'm going to ask you the question. Right? Oh, damn it. <laughs> what did you think? Of the bridge on the River Kwai. 
I really, really enjoyed it. I had a really great time with this one. Mm. What about you? Yeah, I really liked it. Yeah. Hey, yeah. we both liked it. Yeah, I really, really loved it. I think it's a very... Um, it's just... It's it's a long film. I'll give you that. So, mm. the genre... It's like... It's just... It's a World War Two film. So, like... <clears throat> going in you just watch Alec Guinness and these um, British soldiers they're captured by the Japanese and you know it's about endurance and adversity and they're building this bridge and also there's like a subplot of um, one of the blokes who manages to get out um, an American uh, yeah an, an American what was, yeah he's a he's a He's from the navy. He's yeah. not from the from marine. The navy. He's a, he's a he's he's from the navy, yep, and yep. Uh, he manages to escape. And we follow his. We his, do, his, and yeah, his, and so we watch these two storylines interweave. Do they meet? Who knows? Stick around for spoilers. Ooh, Ooh. but yeah, no. I th- I thought it's, this was a gorgeously directed film and beautifully mm. shot film. Oh, it's it's fantastic. Like, the, cin- the the cinematography in this, uh, every shot, uh, I think captures. There's a there's a lot going on. Yeah. Every shot, there's there is. so much happening. Because yeah. the beauty of it is, because it's from the fifties, like they built a real bridge. Like there's hundreds of extras just working as soldiers building this bridge, and just the just the sh- you watch this and you go, the sheer coordination of this movie alone must have been insane. What's really impressive as well is in in terms of coordinating not just the extras and and what's happening mm. in the foreground, the background of the shot, <laughs> the mid ground, <laughs> the high ground, the low ground, <laughs> the high ground uh, is that for a film. In the fifties, the camera's moving quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, like, and in an interesting way. So you it's, know. it's not, it, it it's not overstated. I would say because I I think if you're if you're not looking for it, you wouldn't really notice it because you, you're very you're very invested in what's going on in terms of plot character, mm. but. Just from a technical perspective, it's very impressive. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's very impressive. Very impressive. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We're twirling both our moustaches. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's got curls. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's flat. <laughs> That's a new segment that we'll, we'll, that we'll, we'll implement in the show one day. Moustache Mondays. I don't know. Moustache Mondays. Moustache Mondays. Yeah. Your mama moustache me happy. Um, God, this show, we're, we're 22 minutes in and it's just madness. <coughs> madness! <laughs> what Stick a around line. for spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, and how great is the cast? Like, Alec Guinness, like... Oh, fantastic. It's so good. Like, I, This film is... V- I found this film very similar to Lawrence of Arabia. Like, you've seen Lawrence of Arabia? I have not. Oh, yeah. you haven't? No. Oh, there you go. Okay, well, for the, okay, for the listeners who have seen Lawrence of Arabia, like, this film is almost... Lawrence of Arabia like this is the same movie which also stars Alec Guinness who is a military man who rocks up in a foreign land and you know, has to do a job and, and you know rally rally uh, the men together and it's, it's very similar to Lawrence mm. very similar themes like Alec Guinness does some very similar things in this movie to that so right interesting yeah, it feel, yeah. it feels a little, I don't know if this came first or Arabia came first but like if you've seen one then it may feel derivative for you I might look up just the year. What well, you oh, yeah, yeah, keep yeah. talking? I'll, I'll but, look um, up the year. But yeah, no, Alec is, is fantastic, and you know he, you know Obi Wan is so like he he really owns this film, and like mm. he's surrounded by a great supporting cast as well. Um, I forget the names of the other guys, but like that doesn't. But I forget names of characters very uh, easily. <laughs> William Holden plays. Uh, Oh, what's his name? I think it's Shear. The American? Oh, yeah, yeah. Captain Shears or whatever. Oh, not Captain Shears, but, like, um, the Shears dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's <laughs> uh, great. He's he's excellent. Mm. Uh, the I, whole cast is absolutely... Uh, 1962, La- Lawrence of Arabia. Oh, there you go. Really. So this so came first. After, yeah, oh, there yeah. you go. Well, then, Lawrence of Arabia copied off this then. Because, like, yeah, it's really great. And, like, um, the Japanese captain who who's taking charge of the camp, he's great, isn't he? Oh, fantastic. Isn't he a fun time? Yeah, like, yeah. Because yeah. he starts off as a dick, and no spoilers, but he becomes more than that and I really enjoyed that they went that direction with him yes like you really there's no real villains in this film like like the antagonism is more like I don't know what do you think Brenton do you reckon there's a villain in this film like it's one of those films Nathan oh god don't say it shut the don't even say it stop don't don't put the down Brenton put it down it's don't don't say it complicated okay if you're gonna say that justify it yeah I will uh, I will Fight definitely. Me. I will definitely justify it. Okay. So again, there is two real main plots happening in this film. Yeah. Uh, I c- I won't really go into either of them in terms of the plot points of what happens due to spoilers. We will mm-hmm. go into it after. Yeah. So there's obviously atrocities being done mm-hmm. to these uh, soldiers. 
and it's a bit heavy handed at the start but and but the themes this film explores is really interesting because from the Alec Guinness perspective the Alec what's his name I wrote it down <laughs> uh, Colonel Nicholson Colonel Nicholson he he is fighting hello there not not <laughs> hello there <laughs> he's he's fighting not just for obviously his uh, his people's lives mm. but he's fighting for their humanity and the way that he's doing this is by being a proper uh, Taking the moral, oh god, the moral Real high ground. ground. There yeah, you go. Yeah. I can see exactly what and you're going to say. Yeah, that's what. That's why that title actually yeah. came from. And this film is like surprisingly complex because you think, oh, it's just about the, like some blokes building a bridge. Like yes. it's it's way more than that. Especially yes. what this bridge means to them, and and like, the, and the human rights that they will stand for. Yeah. In order to be respected as human beings. In order to yeah. do this job, I love that scene where Alec and just whips out the the, the law book, yes. <laughs> and you can see it's, how that's it's treated. It's literally the first scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the Japanese are like, do you know, know where you are? Like, <laughs> like but, look, but look around Jap- you, buddy. And from the Japanese perspective, uh, it's a diff- it's a it's a culture battle as well. It's 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 a people that have their own set of pride uh, mm. and and can and morality <laughs> that 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 is shown in a different light. Let's say, yeah. yeah. Can I reintroduce an old segment that we introduced in the episode three for Mononoke? What was the most Japanese thing to happen in this movie? <laughs> you know what wasn't that I was very confused oh. at? It's the flag. Because, like... Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is this... is Are we wrong? Can you please tweet at us, listeners? Because I point... So, Brent and I watch this together as we do most of our films. And I was very confused because in the film, the Japanese flag... You, so, this is set in 1942. But the flag they use is, like, the red dot on the white rectangle. And I thought in World War Two, like, all Japanese flags were, like, the rising... Were the... You know, the red one with the yellow stripes and that kind of stuff. The, uh, the rising sun flag. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The rising sun one. Yeah. So, I was just like, oh... Th- what and I'm, I'm like surely a blockbuster like this or a huge epic film wouldn't have like they had like historical people on set like yeah. this is not this is not like an accident like well I, I, all I'll say is, is that I don't know what happened I don't know yeah. if it's because there's legal reasons attached to this or whether someone just made a silly mistake yeah or <laughs> but th- yeah but like there's, there's hundreds of these flags you could be like given yes yeah. like it's a pretty big mistake which makes me think that I'd like to research it and find out exactly <laughs> what the hell's happened. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, that was a very obvious historical inaccuracy that was yeah. in the film. I think the most Japanese film to actually happen sorry, the most Japanese thing to happen in this movie was that the captain always walked around with a samurai sword. Did you see that? Yes, yes. I, I, w- I was waiting the whole film for him to whip it out and just suddenly just like, just mow a guy down with the sword. He doesn't, unfortunately. Like, <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah, he, he doesn't. doesn't Don't but, get your uh, hopes up. But oh boy, was I hoping for it. I would say the most Japanese thing in this film was the... I like that it explored the their sense of honour in the sense mm. that yeah, if, yeah. They, if they fail at something, they will, they will literally take their own lives. Yeah, seppuku, and, right? That's what it's called? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, it's a thing. It's called seppuku. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and and that's a major plot point in the film as well. That's, yeah. That's from their perspective why they need this bridge to be built because they know if it's a failure, it's a failure on their honor and mm. their pride, and they will they will take specifically their their colonel will take his own life. Yeah. Uh, if 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 failure. Uh, happens and failure is not an option like yeah and like also one thing I pointed out to you Brenton while we were watching this movie is that um, it doesn't have like a huge romantic subplot like most of these movies do no there's no, no, no. There's little f- moments, maybe. Yeah, but th- like, there's no major female character who's just obviously, you know, just the love well, interest. Like, there's no real fem- female characters. No, in it. Yeah, yeah. Which, which might be worse. I don't know. You, t- you tell us, listeners. But like, I know I found it really refreshing that like this is a movie that like we're here to build the river Kwai. His a storyline A about how they're going to build it. Here's a storyline B that's probably going to contradict how they build mm. it. And that's it. Like, And that's what the whole film's about. Like, and, and there's sto- nothing more to it. And what's interesting is that storyline B comes in about, really comes into its own about halfway through the film. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So it's quite, it's quite a... And the film does this quite well. It juxtaposes that uh, that storyline with the other... With the, let's say, yeah, the, I wasn't, with the A I wasn't, like, line. missing. Like, when we were, like, one of the storylines yeah. wasn't missing the other. Like, it balanced it really and well. And they were vastly different as well, which yeah. I appreciated. Yeah. So, and, and getting back to the whole proving that this film is complex, I think, obviously, this discussion around the, the Japanese society versus the British society and, mm. and that culture war, as well as what's actually literally going on with World War Two and the fact that they are prisoners of war. Yeah. So that's pretty complicated stuff. But then the, the, what's going on in the B plot, 
is is also other British active British soldiers along mm. with Canadian soldiers, American soldiers, and are, and Australian soldiers and Australian soldiers. <laughs> oh, how could we yeah, forget? Boy. Crikey, how could we forget our Aussie <laughs> blokes? So, so Brenton and I, like around about like ten minutes into the movie, you find out there's an Australian character, and, and as soon as he said the first word, Brent and I both looked at each other. <laughs> I have no clue if that actor is Australian or not. My guess is that he's not, because it's one of the worst Australian accents I've <laughs> this, ever heard. This guy is is to a show ends what Dick Van Dyke was to British people in Mary yes. Poppins. Like Ex- we we both looked at each other. <laughs> We're just like the fuck is this guy? And as it went on, a single <laughs> tear rolled down my cheek. Yeah, I have no clue uh, what nationality that guy is, but God, oh because my they, they, after well, I was trying to work it out, and they finally say. Oh, and some Australian soldiers, and we looked at each other and just went, oh, oh no. no. There's more of them. <laughs> no. No. Um, yeah. But, so yeah, there's, 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 mm. there's, there's many different soldiers from many different nations that are conspiring <laughs> to take down the bridge yeah. on the River Kwai. <laughs> And, and I'm surprised. I'm surprised how invested you get into the bridge. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so there's active soldiers that are that are working to destroy something that another that their that their fellow men are trying to build yeah. for their own sense of pride to basically keep their humanity and as such keep mm. themselves alive in a horrible situation. And I agree. And that makes it complicated. Yeah. Like you're very right because yeah. like I remember like like two thirds of the film I kept on looking at you, Brandon. I'm like I don't know who to support here anymore. Like yeah, like it, it, it's like Game of Thrones when you when you watch that TV show if you watch it and like and you have characters that you love fighting characters that you also love and you really don't know who to support at that mm. point. It's very much like this in Bridge. So it's actually very like complicated in that sense. Yes. And it's great and it makes it very fresh because like I didn't know if I wanted the bridge to stand or not by the end of the film. Like yeah, like yeah. and it was it was insanely tense. Oh, oh my the, god. The tension was through the, the roof. Yeah, the yeah. tension when it comes into question if the bridge is going to make it or not, like the final like 20 minutes of the film. I found it as tense as any other film. Like, if one of the most tense moments I think I've experienced in cinema. I remember I, I kept on looking at you, Brent, and I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> I kept on grabbing on you. I'm like, this is just, this is too much, man. Like, and you get, for a film from, from the 50s as well. Yeah, like, Because well it's taking its time, too. Yeah. Through those. And, oh. and, and I think that's what really exas- exasperates that tension. It's oh. just building, and it's this quiet We build. put down our Doritos, and we're just like, oh. 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 And they were good Doritos. Oh, thank you. Oh, they were fantastic. Whenever Brenton comes over to record and watch a movie with me, I always like to supply the food. And it, it ranges from beautifully made fish to just packets of Doritos. <laughs> Nathan is a fantastic host. Oh, thank he, you. He's, he, he is. He's, he's wonderful. He looks he looks after us both so we can we can do our best work on this Podcast show. Podcast all night long. Like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... It's a good movie. It's a very good movie. I'm very impressed with it. Like, did did you want to rate it maybe? Or is there, is there still more non-spoilery things you want to talk about? I'm just going to do a quick... Yeah, yeah, you do you, browse, you, mate. You do you. you I'm going to do a quick okay. browse through my notes. Because, like, yeah, like, cause I... I am going to rate... I, I know my rating in my head, like, mm. but um, obviously if there's anything you want to cover, I, I won't be holding you back. So, uh, you yeah, you do you, buddy. What do you yeah, reckon? I, I had a just uh, a, a little couple more. I've got a couple of notes for the spoiler section, but okay. I'll, I'll just say that this film, as I was saying, that the camera moves a lot and whatnot. But the film itself, in terms of pace, moves pretty well. Like it is long, like we said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's still, it's not. It doesn't drag too much. It still moves quite well. Yeah. Um, oh. It moves. I'm not saying that it's the perfect in terms of pacing. It's mm-hmm. perfect. I'm just saying that from scene to scene, the film keeps moving there's a there's a there's an eloquence to the <laughs> yes way that is that a it, thing a film does <laughs> <laughs> but it's not jarring is my point it's not there's yeah. not many real hard cuts in it it just keeps i don't know i'm loving i'm loving like the fade in fade out that's like all the like the 1950s trope yeah of the, for sure yeah the transitions but it works. are great it, 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 oh that's another note i had sorry completely random note the soundtrack is fantastic yes, like yes. really really good if you want like a classic like like lawrence of arabia like ben-hur kind of soundtrack like this is it like it's really really mm. great and it doesn't really kick into maybe like a third through the movie but like once it does like it's really good i had a criticism of this film and i can't remember what it was I yeah. It was it was it was mild and it might have been Was it the weird nineteen fifties kissing that was going mm, on in this film? <laughs> no. I and I there's a lot of it. <laughs> but I won't criticize a film for that. But but yes, that does exist. Uh it might have been actually just 
even though, like I said, I, I think there's a difference between the film keeps moving, it keeps moving, but there's moments that it really slows down. Yeah. That, uh, and it's not so much the tension building stuff at the end, it's some of the stuff in the, in it's the just, middle. It's just watching Alec Guinness just yeah. talk more. Like, so many bloody meetings with tea. I don't, even, I don't even know if it's that. I, I, can't, I need to watch it again to really pinpoint, but mm. I think that there's a good 15 to 20 minutes that could be cut out of this film. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it would... For for its oh, because this film's like what two hours forty, so like yeah. this could easily be a two hour twenty film. Yep, even even two hour ten. Like yeah, you could you could really whittle it down. Like yeah, just get to the build bridge building stuff. Like you know, forget the injured foot and all that stuff. Like I, I, I guess I'm kind of leading near spoilers now, so maybe yeah. we should let's rate yeah. it and then we'll get into it. Yeah, all right. You want you want to rate it first? Yeah, I'll give it. Look, I'll give it. It's not the best movie I've seen. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not. It's not last week where I'm gushing about it like I did Network. Yeah. However, I could understand why someone would say this is one of their favorite movies. Mm. For instance, I think this is a well-made, uh, <laughs> well-acted, is, yeah, uh, well-made film that uh, has a great message, explores some interesting themes, and uh, yeah, I can see why it won all those awards when it came out. Does it make you want to go to Thailand? Oh yeah, like it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. same. Like yeah. watching this, especially like um when the American dude has that meeting with the view, mm. you're just like, man, Thai- like country Thailand is just gorgeous. Mm. Like because I've only been to Bangkok, um in Thailand, I haven't been been outside Bangkok unfortunately. And boy, this is getting me keen to go to Thailand. I've never been to anywhere in Asia, so oh, buddy, I, there's lots, there's lots of places for me to go. Yeah, to. Yes. yeah, but yeah. like I know because like I'll, I've been researching to do a potential Asia trip, mm. and um and I came across the River Kwai. I'm like, oh yeah, this looks alright. And after watching this film, I'm like, man, like I just I have to see this place because yeah. it's so gorgeous oh, and it's, it's just. Oh, oh man, this this film like if, if you want to get inspired to go to Thailand, then definitely watch this film. There's some breathtaking, breathtaking shots. Of, yeah. uh, especially some sunsets in there, but even just the forests and the and the streams and oh. just like and the and the and the river quiet. Yeah, <laughs> like it's there's some great there's some great scenery. Mm. Yeah, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna recommend this. If this film was on, okay. yeah. If this film was on Netflix on a Thursday night and it was randomly on, oh well, yeah. Which you is wouldn't... the gauge that we have? Like, for are you going to watch this movie? <laughs> yeah. oh, here, no, no, no. Spe- t- speak the truth, boy. Oh, I, I, <laughs> Come out with a son. <laughs> okay. Well, in that case, do you not like that criteria or like? Well, that's the thing. Like, I just go. What would be the ideal conditions to watch a film like this? Like, if you're okay. in this mood or like in this place with this Saturday person. Saturday morning, you're not doing anything. Okay. You're, you're at home. The TV's on. The old movies are playing on the TV. River yeah. Quiet comes on. You've had a big night, or just like you know, you just want to have a sleep in day in bed, that kind of thing. Either, either of those two. Okay. I think, and if this is on TV, perfect. Just sit down. And 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 take it in, take it in at your leisure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I I think, but if you're into film, you'll obviously you'll watch this. Yeah. Yeah. If you're and that's that's where I, like in terms of our criteria, it's hard for me to gauge sometimes. And sometimes like I'd be average like, yeah. Joe, like watching this on a Thursday in Arvo, like is this or comes home from work, puts on Bridge on the River Kwai, they're gonna have a good time with it. Yeah. Look, I don't know. I don't know about that. All I'll say is is that I'm gonna stick to my thumbs up because I think it's a good film. Yeah. And yeah, yeah I'm not saying this to, ch- to I, challenge I know, yours. I, yeah, I, know, yeah. I know. I know. You, but, yeah. you, you do, you man. I'm, Cause, thank cause, you. I will. Because I said yes. I've said no to Rocky, and I've said yes. <laughs> to National Lampoon's Animal House, <laughs> which we'll get into next episode. We will, when we hit yeah, our, when we hit the big 10. ten. Episodes, but, yeah. uh, so, I've made some weird decisions. So, <laughs> you, you do you, man. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I, I, I really enjoyed this film. I had a great mm. time with it. Um, I, but this is coming from someone who loves cinema and appreciates cinema, not just for, you know, if it's a good movie or not before. You know, I, half the time watching this movie, I was like, just thinking about how they made this film. Just like logistically, like yeah. managing all these extras, building these sets, filming in, like, they're, Filmed in Sri Lanka, even though it's set in um, Thailand, and just like you, you appreciate the craft. Mm. But in saying that, like, I, if this is a Thursday night and they're like, "Oh, we want to watch a Prisoner of War epic or something like that," I wouldn't go with River Kwai. Mm. Uh, like, if you're an Alec Guinness fan, sure, then maybe watch it. But no, if you want to watch see like a Prisoner of War film, um, you know, watch, you know, all the major stuff from that. Oh, uh, what's some great Prisoner of War film? There's um, or I was t- it Escape from Alcatraz? Then that. I don't know. I've that's not Prison it. of War, but like, um, I'd say you know, <laughs> it's really it's it's interesting because the film that this reminds me of, literally, because it's 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 very similar in terms of plot and what's going on, is actually mm-hmm. Scorsese's Silence, which oh, came out. Of, okay, uh, I think it was yeah, twenty sixteen. 
It was 2016, yeah, yeah. with uh, Andrew, Andrew Garfield, Garfield yeah. Liam Neeson, and uh, Adam Driver. That's right. Uh, which Brenton I, and his Scorsese fan. <laughs> oh, I'm, but I still haven't seen your favourite film It's of okay, all buddy. Time. I know, but one day. One, one day, day soon. Ooh. One day more. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, that was sounding kind of ominous, but ooh. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Um, so, the, the, that's where my mind goes instantly. Oh, but okay. I'm sure there's... I'm sure... I'm sure there's other stuff that it, uh, even stuff that's not so much Prisoner of War, but just even just. I'm sure no one wants to sit down and go. Want, I want to watch a Prisoner of War movie. Well, like. I watched that. There was that Mandela movie with Idris Elba. Oh yeah, that, and that I covered that Nelson Mandela's story and, and his life in imprisonment. Okay, and that's great. And how well it's it's a similar it's a similar almost character to uh, Colonel Nicholson yeah. in the sense that. It's about making someone respect the little things that 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 of nobody that, puts baby in the corner. Well, no, no, it's it's the little things that, that you have to try to persuade someone to believe in your humanity, I guess, so yeah. that you can rise above it and become yeah. the best you can be in that situation. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, very similar themes in terms of that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I'm with like, obvious differences. <laughs> yes, <laughs> if you tell point. you what, I would recommend this over Lawrence of Arabia. To be honest with you, sure, Lawrence yeah, of Arabia is it, so. very, very long, and mm. it's good. It's good, but like I'd say, maybe forty minutes of Lawrence of Arabia is excellent, and then the rest is just Alec Guinness just running about on a desert, just being like, "Oh, do a do a wait." It's not Alec Guinness. No, it's, it's no, no, not no. Alec it's, um, it's um, Peter O'Toole. Isn't yeah, it's it? Peter O'Toole, and he's yeah. very good in it. But like. Yeah, maybe we'll do a Lawrence of Arabia episode. We should, because I'd love yeah. to see it. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I do not want to watch it again. Like, you can, but Maybe like, I'll watch it, and then you just uh, you skim through it. It's at your so <laughs> long. It's like a four-hour long film. When I watched it, I was out with a mate. Okay, so I watched the first half with a mate one night, and then we went out, my mate Logan and I, and we got really, really drunk. Like, we went out to a couple of clubs, had a great night, came home at like two in the morning. This is on the Gold Coast. And then Logan's like, hey... I'm like, I'm really tired. And Logan's like, no, we're going to finish Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> and like, we were so drunk and we, we were tired. I was exhausted. And he's like, no, sit down, Nathan. I'm like, okay. And we, we until like 4 a.m. we finished that movie. So that may also influence my feelings on it. But, but you know. Sometimes with films that are like really, I'm going to call it really filmy films in the sense that they're really slow paced. They're, they're good, but it... It's similar to something like this, but I'd say this is a bit even a bit faster paced. This podcast. Really, oh no, this film. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we're so boring. Oh my gosh, just, <laughs> just turn We've us gone off on now. that many tangents this episode, which is great. I'm loving it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, but yeah, like films that are really kind of art, let's say artsy mm. and take their time and are slow. Like sometimes it's, I find it's best to watch that stuff in the mornings because. Yeah. Because God, your brain's just your brain's just woken up, but still. And then you're thinking about it for the rest of the day. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. As opposed to at night, where you're you're <laughs> you're looking for. Well, in our society, you're looking for like stimulation, and you're looking to like go out and like have a nice night, or, or you yeah, really yeah, yeah. sit in and watch a movie, and like similar to like yeah, like Lawrence of Arabia. It sounds like in some of these films, like I agree with you. Like I agree with your state your your rating on this film because you're not going to watch that no. Thursday night. No. So that's why I say... Saturday and there's other morning. films, like, definitely watch um, Network over this, like, definitely... Oh, yeah. Network... Yeah. Network's... Network's... How a, great was Network Netbo- last week? I've got to say... Uh, i got to say something that I said last week as well, when I said that this is one of the best films ever made. Yeah. I don't like that statement because I haven't seen every film that's ever made. That's true. So I will say that's one of my favourite films that you've seen that thus I've far. Seen. Yeah, yeah. And also, as we do this podcast, we're going to see a lot of great films. Exactly. Like, we still like like we still have like chosen films that most of them are in the nineties. Like, yeah. The only one that wasn't in the nineties for Rotten Tomatoes was Emerald City. So like we've had we've had very <laughs> good for taste. Obvious reasons. For very <laughs> obvious reasons. Oh, I'm still sorry about that. No, no, but- don't apologize. <laughs> it's hey, any any watching any film is an experience, good or bad. It, <laughs> It makes you appreciate film even more, and <laughs> okay. and, and it, it makes you appreciate good films even more. That's yeah. very true. Yes. I like this one. So, should we get into some spoilers? Yeah, let's do it, dude. Yeah, let's spoil it. Spoilers, nothing but spoilers, nothing but spoilers. And Alicanus, <laughs> Anakin, <laughs> Anakin. I have the high ground. <laughs> he did it's have the high Anakin. ground at the end. A, yes. Yeah, like Alicanus at the end. Like God, that last scene was so tense. He's just pacing up and down the bridge, and they're all there, and you, he's spotting the wire, but he's so slow about it. Oh, like perfect editing. Like really excellent like, editing. Excellent editing. Yeah. And God, and again, like these big moments in films when they pay off you're just like yes even though when this pays off it's quite a 
madness. It's quite a. <laughs> it's not a. It's a. It's a complicated ending. It it's, is. It's, it's, but what a great way also to close the film with a guy going like madness, mm. madness, and then he runs off into the jungle. <laughs> yeah. I'd say that's madness. By the way, do you know it's like, like when the, the last shot pans out that panoramic helicopter shot? You can actually see the water ripple from the helicopter blades. Can you see that? I didn't notice I did, it. I I'll did notice that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can notice it. Obviously, like, who cares? But, like... Oh, I'm, that's that's really cool. I just saw it, and I'm like, ooh! <laughs> I know how you shut it. But, um... 50s. Yeah. There's some great shots in this. I love the shot where, um, the the the, uh, the bats, you know... Like, yes. Yeah. That whole uh, firefight. Yeah. You know, that, that, is, that is droned out by the bats. Oh, my goodness. Holy crap. What a great, like, cinematic moment. Oh, oh my Were you waiting God. just for, like, the fight to happen, and then behind a tree steps out Batman, and he just, like, twists the gun, and it's dun, dun, dun. He's <laughs> like, where's the detonator? And it's like, but it's down Adam by West, the river. But it's Adam West. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do a good Adam West voice? No. no. I, I've never... I've, actually, I've never really attempted. It's... it's yeah. What's it, how does it go? He's like... Give me the... the what's it called? Good, the, great, the, yeah. I'm thinking of um, Family Guy. You know, he's the mayor. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Give me the shark repellent bat spray. <laughs> <laughs> he's great. Like, God, yeah, yeah. If Adam West Batman was definitely in this... Like, you know the way they're walking up the wall with the rope? They're doing that, but on like the bridge on the river quiet <laughs> they're, just, <laughs> they're just like laying out explosives and the, <laughs> yes uh, oh god that, that last 20 minutes is just it's great film like it's mm. it's yeah yeah what, what an excellent sequence like, yeah I yeah. mean I mean like if again if like that 10-15 minutes had been cut out of this movie it could have been it could it could have been even like another like another tier above because I agree with you it's not like the tier above it's kind of like it's a bit it's a bit it's a good movie it's, it's a great it's a good it's maybe a, it's great a movie, movie. Yeah, it's, it's, it's with it's some fantastic movie. moments that last twenty minutes are awesome I know watch like yeah like the the movie is worth alone for the last twenty minutes maybe I should give it a thumbs up no no but no, like if you do it. yeah if you do watch it like well obviously if you're here hopefully you've watched it but like that it's like it is as tense as Argo mm. if you've seen that film like when they're at the airport yeah like, great comparison it, dude it's, yeah it's so t- and you're just like I remember because the whole film I'm like don't blow it up because you see how much mm. Alekinus loves this bridge and you know also I didn't know if this bridge was a real thing if this existed in real life so I'm like oh I want to visit the bridge so hopefully it doesn't blow up it's a fictional bridge <laughs> yeah I thought this is, this is based on a novel I think? yeah it's based yeah, on a novel yeah. so it's all fict- fictitious and actually historically inaccurate which um, some critics have said yeah yeah I've heard I've heard musings that this is quite historically inaccurate yeah, yeah. but regardless of that like I yeah I was because it's the start I'm like no we don't want the bridge to be a thing because obviously the Japanese win if the if it works, and then like, but then yeah, as soon as like the, the you know the American rocks up with you know with the with the Thai girls <laughs> who just all have guns for some reason, um and like yeah and and he's like by the, and that um and, and and that Canadian boy is by the detonator, mm. like I was just like just pull the trigger like like just do it do it like just <laughs> yeah and and when it and when it happens when the bridge finally blows up it's amazing well it's and the build up to that too of like the the, the many deaths that happened in succession yeah, like it's so like the kid dies the Canadian kid dies it's uh, like Rogue One yeah. essentially um, it is like the ending yeah, of Rogue One yeah it is One. it is like, <laughs> yeah Gosh, and then the explosion. Star Wars based on those World War Two movies, am I right? Oh, they yeah, are. Yeah, like yeah. that's what I mean. Like it's yeah, and and uh, and she is runs out across the river, gets shot multiple times. Yeah, and he's crawling, and he's crawling, oh. and then he dies, and then Alec Guinness realizes and goes, "What have I done? What have I done? What have I become?" Yeah, and then and then that, damn you to hell. That mortar hits behind him, and as he goes to blow the bridge, and so like you're like, oh god, like he, he's obviously it's he hit the back of his head, he's he's losing his bodily function, he's dying, yeah, and then his last like kind of his last moment of life, I guess, is him stumbling towards it. As he stumbles towards it, he dies, falls on the detonator, oh. the bridge blows. As the train is on it, and you watch oh. this train, like, this, this just... real bridge and this real train, like, no fakeness to it. This, they really did this. Absolutely incredible. And apparently they had, like, like five cameras just ready to go because they could only do this once. <laughs> Boys, and, like, the whole budget's in this scene because it would have been, like, It would have yeah. been, like, yeah. And... It's an amazing shot and like oh, oh, incredible gosh. incredible special effects. Yeah. yeah. Like crazy good. Um I, I just want to talk about just the themes quickly of this. Yeah, film. let's do some themes. Uh and, <laughs> and mainly because I think my favorite scene in this film is actually because I think the last twenty minutes are awesome. Yeah, my yeah, favorite yeah. scene is probably mm-hmm. the the first scene that Alec uh, that Colonel Nicholson when he first comes out of the I'll call it the hot box. Or the oven, I think they call it. <laughs> I call it the hot box because in Django Unchained, it's called the hot box. But, but so they, they in your goal, and and they, he has his first meeting uh, with the Japanese colonel. Mm. What a great scene! And it it, it kind of explores that that 
the power dynamic or yeah and also and also the stakes of the moment are so high mm. and as well as that like it's just that character is just so awesome Colonel, he's just so awesome. Colonel Nicholson, I just I love the the theme of that. He's, he's so fighting. chill as well, like because it's 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 um it's it's basically order versus chaos. Yeah. Uh, in in that's how Anna, Alec Guinness's character sees it, but it's 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 basically that he wants the the Japanese colonel to see his and his troops' humanity, mm. and that they could benefit him in the long run. Mm. And that scene doesn't have a happy ending. Like they they kind of find that happy medium so to speak later yeah. on in the film but the way that that scene happens and the way that he won't accept the the food the the drink and then he does drink the scotch and, then, and he's and, like fuck you and like and i and win it's like such a, it's such a moment of sass from <laughs> <laughs> you were just movie. waiting where go like have For a little sure. sass click in that <laughs> oh it's great oh. but it's so well acted because there's exhaustion in there and yeah. then the, there's there's the power dynamic you said like there's this like kind of he has all the power in the sense that he has all the food he has all the mm. he has all the drink he has he has all the weapons he has all the power and he's basically a slave and and the whole scene is about basically like just just see my humanity see give me the respect of a human being and yeah. imagine the benefits that it could benefit you but also because these are the rules that our society is placed around and if you don't adhere to those rules yeah, he's like this is the Geneva Convention like, what are we buddy, it's animals like, like, yeah. oh, what are we savages yeah. but like yeah and you know and I love it when they have dinner later on they're all having tea and like you can obviously tell like Al Guinness is now completely in charge like like yeah. the Japanese like, you know, like for the second half of the film he just doesn't have lines anymore he's no. just he's just obsolete and it's kind of it's it's interesting I find it interesting that because we still get a he still gets a lot of screen time yeah. we still get some quiet just looking about just like oh shit what am I gonna do but, but it's it's kind of like because he He's grateful for the British for what the what they are doing. Yeah, because he him. knows he's fucked. Yeah. Like he knows he's not going to get the British done. But at done. the same time, because <laughs> he's, he's, he's too too busy with uh, with his calendar. I'm not quite sure. Had he written a suicide note and bringing his knife yeah. to the British? Because that's what that's what the thing it's was. So interesting, yeah. and that's so interesting because it's almost like even though he succeeded for his, you know, his he's the higher officials in the army. Like he's done the job. He's he's got the British to do yeah, the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He still failed because he himself couldn't. Basically, rise maybe rise above one his own. He couldn't do it on his own. He had to rely on Alec Guinness, and like, that's right. Yeah. And and, and but also, there's another job after Brenton. That's right. And he he couldn't lead. He couldn't no. lead those men. He couldn't lead those people. He was incapable of doing that. Yeah. And so he's failed. In he his has eyes. failed. And so, once he moved, and once he's finished, like he's just going to go into another job where there's not going to be an Alec Guinness, and he's yeah. going to probably build another fucking bridge, and he's going to be like, I can't do this. Yeah. So like, there is no end for him until like the war itself ends. It's so interesting. Yeah. What a great character. Yeah. What great, a, great yeah. character. And I love his little calendar with the bikini clad woman and they're like, <laughs> Ooh, and like, as you pull the months back, she's more and more undressed. Well, well, you're like, again, it's and I love his little, I love his little model that sits next to his yeah, desk. Yeah. You wonder like, did he make the model? Does, was he like, doing arts and crafts in between all these meetings? Like <laughs> he's he, just planning the, Brit. that's an interesting set piece like the whole <laughs> way that whole his whole office space is designed how he basically has the slave out the front that's pulling constantly through the whole day pulling the the kind of uh the fan the manual yeah. fan and for his in, for the inside of his hut and then on top of that he has an american like he's it's such a western idea like the calendar girl thing on yeah the, like and it's an american basically it's an american uh calendar that he has on his wall and there's all like these little things that like he has that Scottish whiskey yeah. randomly he has no because he says he mentions that he like was raised in London briefly yeah. like he he's had a couple years there so you can tell he, he just doesn't want to be there I reckon he's just like some random bloke who just got poached he's like oh yeah he can lead this like, battalion and he's like maybe I guess and mm-hmm. the Japanese are like alright go and he's like oh shit no <laughs> I wasn't expecting this and, then, and he offers Alec, Alec Guinness he's uh you know British corned beef that's what he yeah. does and then he's no thank you and he's then like he, this is not the way of the Jedi and he's like <laughs> no <laughs> how do I negotiate with you Al Guinness these like, are not the droids you're looking for <laughs> yeah I mean I know I found come it, here my friend <laughs> <laughs> it's true like I found him like so, like super super interesting mm. and like I also um, love it when like he slaps Alec Guinness with like the piece of paper and then like there's that shot where all the British men to suddenly step forward at once yeah. like like all of them and like you can see how much power Alec Guinness has as well because like he um, when he like comes out of the, the hidey hole or whatever and who knows what he was doing in there by the way like <laughs> he comes out and then literally like 
every British soldier just like swarms him. Yes. I was just waiting for like a comedic shot where Alec Guinness just runs in the other direction. <laughs> and he runs back towards the hole and we see all these like women crawling out and he's like, no, 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 uh, let me back in. <laughs> well, for a moment, what was interesting in that moment, my brain was my brain was going to dark places in the sense that I thought it was, it was almost... They open up, it's a skeleton inside. <laughs> well, yeah, I w- it was almost that because Alec Guinness goes into the office and then the, the Japanese colonel says, oh, it's, you know... Like, I'm going to give you basically what you want and I'm going to give you the freedom to, to build this yeah. bridge and, 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 and help. Here's the keys to the castle. Yeah. Um. And so they go to let the other officers out. But he almost says it like disingenuously, like when he mm. when he says that. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and it's almost like that because it's hurting him so much to give him this power. That, that kind of is how I justify it now. But in the moment I'm going, there's a catch to this. And I honestly thought the catch was that all the officers had died in their oven mm. and that they were going to release those officers to help lead the men and they were all going to be dead. Ooh. And like, so they were that crowding around nice. and it was going to be- Alec is like stretching outside his box. He's like, ooh, I'm back in the game. And so, then he opens up their so, door so, and all so just- they, Yeah, they opened yeah. it up and when the first guy walked out, I was like, oh. Thank God. Yeah, I was-, I, was honestly, <laughs> I didn't even notice you go through that when you see it next to me. Gosh, like, well, I was very quiet. I was going, oh no. Oh, <laughs> Are you walking back and forth in your no. chair? Just like, oh no, what's, what's going to happen next? Yeah. Like, yeah, and I love that he also gets to be the one that drops the title line, where like he's talking to the British Army right at the very start, and he's like, "You must build a bridge on the River Kwai." And I was just waiting for him to like turn towards the camera and be like, "Ooh!" And then the credits roll. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, no, he was a great boy. I, I really loved where his um journey went and all that kind of stuff." And like, I don't know. I also um love this uh, like by his office how like he orders instructions, and you watch like like five guys like carry the instructions down the line. His uh, Alkins is like the tea. Yeah, he's like, "Bring me more tea." And then he like orders it in Japanese, and he's like Agoroshima, and then like and then like five other guys like Agoroshima, Agoroshima, Agoroshima. And, like, you see it like echo down the line. Uh, yeah, like, and, da- just- and down the camp, like out the window, like, it's, it's great. And then <laughs> I wanted and to all go just sitting there waiting for it. It's great. It's <laughs> yeah. like there's like their one job is to like carry. You can not just one guy just run. It's like oh, I just wish we had like a scene where it just goes like a minute, and you just like watch it just like travel like like it ends up like going via like Russia, and then something like people like, over telegrams. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just it's like, like it's like, traveling like, across the world. Have you seen that? Mis- the Bean episode with Rowan Atkinson when he uh, he he's playing putt putt and he's playing mm. mini golf yeah and he basically he can't get the ball in the hole mm. but he keeps hitting the ball and it <laughs> takes him like all over town it's like that oh like, really it's, so, it's, it's such a great episode like, I think I might have seen that when I was a kid it's so wonderful like and <laughs> and so he's got I can't even remember I think he goes. It gets in, like, the garbage truck, and then it, like, takes him to the park, and then it lands <laughs> in a kid's ice cream, and then he hits it out of this kid's ice cream. It's, it's, it's a great episode. But, yeah, it's uh, like that. It's like, my favorite mis- just follow it. Just <laughs> around, like... I think the best must have been episode is the one where he's trapped in the car park. Remember, he has to try and get his car out? Yes, and like, yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, in that... Uh, that Yes, I remember so well. And then the three wheel, it ends with the three wheeled car yes. pulling in, and then it like it tips over, like as he like ah. speeds out the the wrong way. Yeah, <laughs> oh, just that that show. That is, is a classic. It God, is I love so him good. And should, Mr. Oh. Rowan Atkinson is such a smart human being, such oh. an intellectual fellow that yeah. you'd be surprised, given that you know he plays Mr. Bean. Oh yeah, um, but that's intelligent comedy. What yes, he does, like, yes. Yeah. And when you, if you watch documentaries about Rowan Atkinson and how they they made that show, like mm. just watch the man at work. He's a I, genius. He's he is a genius. genius yeah. I, yeah, like I love that we're going to get um, another Johnny English movie this year. Oh, I'm so excited! And Boff's coming back. <laughs> yes. I, I I have to confess, I've never seen a Johnny English movie before. Mm. Are they good? Uh, oh, I really enjoy. I, yeah, they're good. Yeah, oh, okay. they are. Are I, they like Austin Powers good or like? Oh, they're totally different to Austin Powers. Oh, okay. But, but in a in a different let's say a different genre or a different style of comedy, they're as good. I'd say. Ah, yeah. Okay, it's exciting. Yeah. Um. I think the first one is less than twenty years old, so I don't know if we're gonna have a chance. I'm actually I'm gonna look it up. Oh, right okay. Now. I think I'm early two thousands from memory. I think it is too. I think yeah. Two thousand and two. I don't know if it's. A, I don't think they did it back in the nineties. Two thousand and three. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're a little bit late from yeah. that. So well, when we when we get there, we'll do we'll do a Johnny English. We're doing <laughs> some classic Johnny English band. Yeah, but yeah. no, like, Rowan Atkinson's amazing. I love it also when he um surprisingly rocked up during the Olympics. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And he like, was playing yeah. the piano. And he was then, like, yeah, doing yeah. that thing. Right. I remember like just watching the ceremony and then the camera pans and you just like on the piano and then like goes up his body and you see his face and like the Olympic Stadium roared. Like yes. everyone lost their shit. Like people lost their shit when the Queen suddenly was like working with James Bond. But nah, as soon as like Ron Atkinson rocks up, everyone's like, oh, it's Mr. Bean. Like, And it was great. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. It was such a good moment actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, quality. Oh, I love Mr. Bean. Do you so like you Mr. Know, Bean movies as well? Oh, I've seen the, the one where he goes to Hollywood. 
uh, oh. is like that is such that is such a funny fucking movie. It's a very funny movie. Oh my god! But I prefer Mr. Bean's Holiday. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen. I've seen that film once. I saw it once in cinema, oh. and I love like the Willem Dafoe's in it, and I yeah. love his character's <laughs> and, hilarious. And, and Willem Dafoe's in a movie about himself. <laughs> yes, and like and it's like directed, written, produced, and like with the, the only parts of the film you see the opening credits, and it's just all Willem Dafoe. It's <laughs> so good. It's uh, yeah, it's so funny. I, I have to uh, watch it again because I haven't seen it in a while, but I remember so really good. enjoying it. Yeah. I watched it maybe like two years ago for, um, for like a repeat viewing and like it holds up so well like where he eats like the lobster in the yes. French restaurant it's so funny god I gotta watch uh, it again yeah. and when he um sings oh um the Ave Maria song like, yeah. and he's like basking Ave Maria yeah yeah, yeah. oh no it's like oh mio babino caro and it's like that one oh it's it's so good but I love the moment too where he's trying to stay awake at night when he's driving to Khan oh yeah and, and, and so and then it shows like all these things like he's sticking his thumb like in the in the lighter like in the car <laughs> and he's right. uh, and and uh. Uh, but then and then it just it hard cuts to the morning and the yeah. the girl that he's with that's in the passenger seat goes stirs awake and she realizes that she's she's made it she's there and then she turns to him and he's shoved like i think it's i think it's <laughs> like, like keeping his eyes open and his eyes are so wide and he's just like oh that, that shit is hilarious oh, oh my god oh it's so funny god i gotta watch it again it's yeah. so good like mr bean's holiday like uh, forget any of the films we reviewed so far listeners like put on mr bean's <laughs> holiday it's so good it's Easily better than anything we've reviewed. Forget Spellbound. <laughs> forget Network. Whoa, like it's, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's like, oh, forget River Quiet. It is just so good. <laughs> yeah, so any more spoilers? Because I feel... I um, feel... I feel there was a little, I had like little notes like I love like I had like little things I noticed like mm. like when the guy gets like attacked by leeches he's such a baby about it like, like do you remember like like there's like it's, it goes for, like maybe a minute the scene yeah. but like at one point they're hiking through the forest and like one of the like um English dudes like has a couple of leeches on his legs do you yep. remember that yes and he's like he's like crying about it and he's only got maybe like two leeches on well, him yeah he's using the butt of his cigarette to 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 get rid of the leeches oh but it's like just rip them off like. Like, Isn't there like Don't you put salt on them You I do thought, yeah, yeah it's yeah. like the fire or salt it's, yeah. like, it's like their weaknesses If they were Pokemon but like, <laughs> I suppose I haven't done A leech Pokemon a le- actually A leech appeared in the wild Leechachoo Leechion And then Leechazard Charmander go <laughs> But like I don't know I've been hiking And you've, you've been In school camps That kind yeah, of stuff sure. Like Honestly le- Leeches are fine Yeah Our school Do you mind leeches Oh, like, yeah, I think they're fine. Yeah, uh, it's like don't cry over a leech. Uh, right? And you can kind of feel them when they're there. Like, yeah. you, like, feel the blood. <laughs> Ooh. But I'm not that grossed up by leeches. Like, no. no. I remember, every time I get a leech on me, I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever. I'll just yeah. flick it off, you know? Yeah, well, at, at, at our school musical camp, yeah, yeah. We, I went out one night looking for a certain someone that had just left our cabin. And I oh, went I out, remember this. And I went out barefoot, and I came back with a foot full of leeches. And it was, yeah, it was just casual, like, oh, yeah. Rubbed them off and they just <laughs> came off and I went to sleep and got up. That's the next right. Morning. Was That's when um one of our cabin mates was sneaking out to meet a girl, wasn't it? No, he was. Sn- no, there was another. Oh, was that when another one of our mates pretended to be injured or something? No, he snuck out. Like, and we were like, "Dude, where the fuck were you?" And his any Eddie's comment was, "Oh, I just went out to look at the moon. It was a nice view." And we were like, <laughs> "What were you? What was this the one I was on?" Yes, you were Who there. Was it? Just say the first name. This was you were there. Lucas. Oh yeah, yes. that's right. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Disappeared no. for like a solid half hour to an hour. That's right. And we had no idea where he was. It was like three a.m. in the morning. We go out looking for him. <laughs> uh, Kai finds him. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Kai. And then he comes back and we're like, "Where the fuck were you, dude?" <laughs> I was just I just was out going to the bathroom and then I saw the view and I just was entranced and just sat down and watched it and we were just like hey man the night sky is beautiful I- <laughs> dude, we were like preparing for the worst we were yeah. like something's happened to Lucas you know we were we were like sound the alarm sound the alarm like get get uh get get the teachers get everyone like like get your Rally torches the <laughs> yeah that was a crazy night that was a yeah. fun night though. that was a good night though like, yeah. high school camp's always the best of memories like yeah aren't they yes <laughs> Um, I also love the bloke I'm um, in the film who's like talking about explosions. You know, when he like when the American dude first meets the guy about explosions, and he, they're just like walking up to his office and that kind of stuff, and he's just like, "Oh yeah, no, I could I make some explosions. We got these nice ingredients and these nice ingredients." And like they're walking in the most beautiful vista of Thailand 
in the background, like this mountainous range. But he's just like, oh, you could probably blow them up using this and blow them up using that. Like, I just found it really funny that he just like is so laissez-faire that about it. That whole segment, how it juxtaposes to obviously the Prisoner of War stuff because it's so lavish. Yeah. And, it's so and he decadent. volunteers in the end of that yeah, scene. Yeah. That was a great dialogue. Yeah, yeah. Like, that, that whole scene was fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then the guy was like, well, don't know, chap, you'll do a I love like how they're casual they are about it when like these other men are like just have literally been fighting for their lives for like the past hour of screen time yeah and that goes to them and they're preparing to you know possibly even save these they see it as saving these men by blowing up this bridge and, and putting a stop to this manual labor yeah 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 um, and obviously stopping the train the train track so they can disrupt the Japanese mm. but uh yeah that, it was such a great juxtaposition from the from where we were before in the prisoner of war camp with that with which was kind of hopeless and yeah 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 yeah, yeah. also one one more one last thing i wanted to mention in spoilers is like is like the awkward kissing scene with the chick <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, yeah and and that classic 50s closed mouth kissing yeah where it's just and, like and they're just like like they're looking as though someone that someone's like squishing their faces it's together like, yeah it's like and, pursed lips just rubbing together like yeah and, and then one of his mates comes over and so she just runs back to the beach and <laughs> In the background in the water the whole scene as they're like and she's just awkwardly splashing about like, I love it I love you it you and I were both laughing I love so, it so much, much. Oh. it's like it's showing how much the camera can capture on like these these old <laughs> and having like such a serious conversation oh, and she's wonderful. she's like waving her arms and she's having like the best time of her life she's just like I get paid for this. So. Oh, I wish more films used the background in a creative... Like, not that yeah. that's that creative. There's, there's other shots in this film that use the background so much creatively. Oh, yeah, yeah. M- so much more creatively. Mm. Uh, but but it's still that's still funny. Like, it's oh, still... Fu- I like, it. I love it. It's so funny. It's so funny. So, yeah. Um, what are we going to talk about now, Nathan? Well, hey, Brenton. I think it's time to look at this film's poster. Let's take a look. Do-do-do-do-do. Oh my god! Look at this poster. So we're looking oh. at the original theatrical release poster for Bridge on the River Kwai. It's the one with the um orange sunset along um, with and the lo- bridge yeah. on the River Kwai. Yeah, that is a majestic poster. I think this is the best poster we've seen so far. Oh, perfect! This is such a good poster. Perfect. I'd I'd say Jurassic Park's up there for me, but oh, that's true. But this. Oh, I would rather have this in my room than same, Jurassic Park. Like, yes. It's like, I love that it's hand-painted. I love that. Also, like, it's in landscape rather than portrait. Yep. I love that about it. It's just, it's just beautiful. Perfect. Like, it's, it's a really beautiful portrait. Like, even if, like, you didn't have the titles on it, so it was just, like, the actual image itself, I would still have that as a work of art. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, and, like, there's the bridge on the River Kwai. Although, it kind of spoils what the bridge looks like in the end, because I had no idea what the bridge was going to look true, like. True, true. And that's yeah. such a big moment. That when you first see it. What, look at what they have achieved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. but no, and like it's got the, uh, you know, Alec Guinness is on the bottom of those actors' lines. So, what was it? Spans a whole new world of entertainment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, th- yeah. I, I think, I don't think that's about the film. It might be about the Cinemascope. Yeah, it might be. It's just advertising Cinemascope. Mm. Yeah. I wish, we, I wish we saw this in a cinema. Oh, same. This would be well, amazing to see in a cinema. Going back to Lawrence of Arabia, that's on like every year. Like, yeah, they on, always do Lawrence. Is it 70 millimeter, I'm pretty sure. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, There's they, always retro screenings. But it's on, yeah, and it's on yeah, like yeah, 70 yeah. millimeter at a, at a cinema near us. And I, I actually, you know what? I might go and watch Lawrence on the big screen there just to. So I can appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, if not for this podcast, just do it just for you. Cause, like, it yeah, is, for it, sure. It is a film worth seeing if you're a cinema lover. Yeah. But like, if you're just like a, a casual oh, yeah. movie person, then I've don't. I've got to see it. Yeah. 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 And, and Peter O'Toole is phenomenal in it. Mm. Like, he absolutely deserved an Academy Award for it. So, um, which, which he didn't, we didn't get because yeah. he just doesn't win awards. But um, yeah, so no, like, I, I, great, great poster. Like, oh, beautiful. If you Speaking of Academy Awards, though, yeah. Alec Guinness won Best Actor for this film. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, good on him. He, yeah. he did do a he great just, job. He he deserved it, I'd say. Like he does yeah. some, for that scene alone. That uh, my favorite scene in the film. I thought he was fucking phenomenal. Which scene? The scene between his first scene out of the oven when he oh, goes okay. in, and, and the dinner scene where he gets given his corned beef and he refuses oh, it. And okay. he, he chucks his little bit of sass and then he drinks his whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Sassy Alec Guinness. So. Sassy Alec Guinness. All right. Well then, buddy. I think it's time to see critics. Whoop. And what they're saying. What are they saying? What are the critics saying? Well, what are they saying? <laughs> all right. So, on on Tomatoes, where the critics are all collated, where people like to judge movies, has a reading of 94%. Wow. That's high. And audiences scores gave us 93%. So, like I said, we're just cracking through the 90s, buddy. God. Got- I honestly thought this would be in the late, the, the, the top end of the 80s. 
Oh, yeah. there you go. I don't really care about numbers, but anyway, yeah, it's just same, like fun same, facts. Same. Um, all right, so like I, like I normally do, I like to grab two positives, two negatives from both audiences and critics. And so we'll start with the critics. So Robert Hatch from The Nation uh, gave this movie a positive review, and he said, The bridge on the River Kwai amused and excited me. What the? <laughs> was, he, was he excited when like those girls were swimming on the rocks and you think it was leading towards a sex scene but then it didn't then it went very violent very quickly <laughs> uh yeah i don't know i don't know if it's that amusing the first hour is pretty dark yeah uh, it was an amusing film yeah just be like the in terms of excitement yeah sure the last 20 minutes are full of excitement oh my god mm. that was insane so yeah, uh, good work buddy john a nesbitt from old school reviews he gave a positive review mm? he said Hitler has only got one bull. Goering has two, but very small. Mm. I think that's a little bit racist, John, mm. to be honest with you. Uh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm a poor buddy. I was expecting more from you from old school reviews. <laughs> look, at this, look at this bloke's picture as well in his review. Just want to point this out. Like, look at that. Hey, he's, look. A, he's an old fella. He is an old fella. He is old school. Employing yeah. a little bit of... Ra- no, so there wasn't that much racism in this movie as well like towards no. the Japanese or the British like there weren't, there weren't any racist remarks or even like no the most racist thing in the film is that guy's Australian accent high five buddy hey. <laughs> uh, you're not wrong there um, okay so uh, Phil Hardy from Time Out magazine he gave it a negative review okay and he said a classic example of a film that fudges the issues it raises I don't know if it fudges it I, and I don't know if I don't know again this film doesn't really provide answers uh, but I don't I think I, I think that's the film's uh, uh, I think that's a positive Look, what, what, what might help you is this next one look, look, David Kerr from the Chicago Reader he gave a negative well and he I think he builds on this he says okay. he says for what it is it ain't bad though it serves mainly as an illustration of the ancient quandary of revisionist movie makers if all you do is systematically invert cliches you simply end up with creating new ones so I think what he's saying mm. versus what you know um, what we took away from this film is that it doesn't really explore um prisoner of war mentality that you would expect like it doesn't really deal with their psyche as much like just what it means to be a prisoner of war you don't actually see the difficulty of building the bridge itself because it kind of skims over that right so and you don't like you don't really see anyone die on it or like be here like you walk through the sick bay once but like well no you do because there's the there's the scene at the very start where and i'm i'm not disagreeing with you i'm just saying that there is a shot at the start that shows the the corpses on the poles Mm. as the as the japanese officers carry those corpses to the burial ground to be buried. Oh, yeah, that's right, all yeah. those graves. Like, yeah, that's like literally how yeah. the film opens. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I suppose so, but, like, yeah, I don't know, I was expecting... I would have I liked this film to really deal with, like, what if we can't deliver? Because also, it yeah. assumed that the British could build I'd, it in the first place. I'd, I'd agree with that. Like, I'd agree that when Alex Alec Guinness is... We need to see the... Uh, the... You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, like, I, 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 we need to see, like, the... the oh, God... God damn it! What the, is the word? I'm Find your words, for? boy. Ah! Do you uh, speak English? I do. I don't. <laughs> uh, then you don't deserve to be on this team. Oh, fine. No more building of the River Kwai for you. We need to see the consequences of Alec Guinness's decision to n- not give in to the Japanese way and to not let the officers work alongside the regular soldiers. Yeah. So yeah, I'd agree that maybe there should be just a few shots. Of yeah. just those consequences. Although I do love that we had a few good shots of Alec Guinness just looking like a boss on uh, on that train carriage. <laughs> Remember he was like going down the rails. Oh was, like, yeah, <laughs> he was just, his legs were up and he was just looking around at his workers like, mm, yeah boy, yeah boy. <laughs> he was just posing <laughs> for the photo shoot. Um, t- oh, listen, listen to some audiences now. KCT he gave it five stars and he wrote a masterpiece. Probably Guinness at his best. Is this Guinness's best acting that you've seen? Yeah, yeah, I think he's. I think he's a great actor. He is a great actor. I've never seen him in anything terrible. Uh, he's very good. He's very, very good in Lawrence Arabia. Mm. Like he, he's excellent in it. And um, obviously in Star Wars, he's, he's great too. But he doesn't have much to do in Star Wars. He's kind of, yeah. He was nominated for a supporting actor Oscar for Star Wars. You got nominated for an Oscar for Star Wars? Sorry? He got nominated for an Oscar for he Star did. Wars? He did. Doesn't that just blow your mind? What? <laughs> <laughs> really? He did. He did. The original Star Wars, he was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Wow. And part of me thinks that because he was Alec Guinness, he got yeah. the nomination. Yeah, but, probably. But it's like in the same way that Johnny Depp was nominated for an Oscar for Jack Sparrow for the first one. 
Oh, but I think that's deserved. But I don't mm. know if he deserves <laughs> to be in the lead category because I'd argue that that oh yeah, he's a supporting char- character. In, yeah, in yeah, that yeah. first film, he's not the lead character. Mm. Yeah, you know, if they, maybe if they're not supporting him, he would have gone there as well. Yeah, probably. I mean, it was such yeah. a yeah. Oh, he kind of squandered that though because then it was like, if it's a good thing, it's kind of sometimes it's best just to take a step away from it. But yeah, he just went all, oh, yeah. all in on that character, and it's a shame <laughs> because it's that first Pirates movie is really fucking good. It's so good. Oh, it's so good and like the rest I just I can't like like I really enjoy 2, 3 and 4 but 5 is genuinely I, horrendous I refuse to watch 5 because all I hear is that it's genuinely it's horrendous like, and I just I just can't do it to myself no yeah. don't it's like 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 people have mixed feelings sometimes about 2, 3 and 4 but like 5 is just like if if 1, 2, 3, 4 all in the A slash high B category 4 is, sorry 5 is just like a D minus an mm. E plus like it is so horrendously terrible well like, I'd give the first one like an A or an A a, yeah, an A, and then I, mm. everything that came after that, so two to four, I'd put so in the spectrum of the B. Yeah, and so you don't go to five because yeah. it, it just it just messes with it. So God. yeah, just stop, it. I, I stop really, it, Disney. <laughs> just stop milking your old franchises. No, I am excited for Pirates of the Caribbean to come back in Kingdom Hearts three. Oh, okay. LAC, I am pumped. I'm is Jack Sparrow going to be in that? Oh yeah. Is Johnny that voicing Jack Sparrow in it? I have no idea. But they're going to use sound bites for but, him. But but. Parts of the Caribbean was in Kingdom Hearts 2. Crikey. And it's going to be in Kingdom Was it just Kieran Knightley, Lando Bloom, and Johnny? Or did they have No, like it was. I'm pretty sure it was Johnny. And they would have had Davy Jones as well. Yeah, like, like the, the, the second game, they used the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Oh, okay. But I think this newest one, Kingdom Hearts 3, they're going to use the third one, I think, as like ah, inspiration. Okay. Yeah. Um, so interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff, yeah. yeah. What a shame Johnny Depp is, you know, not what he is. Oh these my days. God. Finding Neverland, Sweet yeah. Todd. He did like, Pirates of the Caribbean. And then he just, you know, if you just succumb to his lifestyle eventually, his lifestyle finally caught up with him. And oh, like, he's now, so good in Finding Neverland. Far out. I haven't seen Finding Neverland before. We've got to watch it. I don't so. know if it's 20 years old. I don't think it is, but. Oh, okay. Yeah, but he's great at Edward Scissorhands, obviously. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Edward Scissorhands, oh my God, yes. He's so good in it. Yes. And like... What's eating Guildford Grape and... Oh, what a what an icon. Yeah. I know. What? A, why is he in a Harry Potter movie? It's like, oh, what are you doing, Johnny Depp? What are you doing, Grindelwald? Um, <laughs> okay, so Gordon M said five stars, mm-hmm. and he gave it, without a doubt, this is the best film I have ever ever seen wow the, the ending never fails to bring me goosebumps and a very strong emotional reaction yeah the ending yeah. the really ending's great. worth it yeah and hey like I said it's a really well made movie and I can see why it would be someone's favourite movie of all time yeah. oh yeah. yeah 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 of course sure. like, but definitely this is a great candidate it won lots of Oscars so yeah, yeah you're not wrong um, Calvin L he only gave it two and a half stars Brenton <laughs> Calvin <laughs> And he said, um, a fine display of British stubbornness which brings you into a roller coaster ride. It seems to suggest an ironic humour in life, but it could have been real in revealing the appalling conditions and the deadly atmosphere of the construction site. Otherwise, quite a draggy movie. I mean, I don't disagree with him. No, I don't either. So, yeah, yeah, we should have a great time. And the last review, Harrison R. gave it one star, and he just simply wrote, I'd rather watch a documentary on sewer employees. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that, hey you know what I'm sure, I am sure that a, a documentary on sewer employees would actually be really fucking I'm interesting I'm sure it'd be great watch. like I'm sure it'd be like could you imagine it would be that dissimilar oh from this God. Oh, you know what I mean like yeah. you know they're all trying to build a sewer and maybe they're not prisoners of war but they're certainly prisoners of their own profession <laughs> <laughs> uh Maybe we'll do that for next week. I don't know. Yeah, we'll just write a doco on Sue Room Boys. That's what we'll do for our 10th episode. That's, that's 20 years old. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but until then, God. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, good. I'd say it's a good movie. Yeah. It is a great movie. Yeah, mm. I really had fun with it. I'm I'm glad we watched it. Yeah. Yeah, same. What, yeah. what a great... And then, hey, next week, buddy, episode 10. Oh, my God. I'm really excited. Oh, my God. Oh my god! <laughs> episode ten. I can't believe it. It feels like we've done a lot more episodes. But yeah. Hey, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really, in, I'm you. really looking forward to next week to celebrate. 10. I know. Our what big, should we do? Like to celebrate? Should we? Should I whip out the scotch? Should I whip out um the Colonel Scotch that he gave Al Guinness and and be like, do, do you want some English food? <laughs> do you want? Do you want some scotch? I think it's not a bad idea. Yeah. Let's just like have a drink 
and just celebrate we've done 10 episodes yeah yeah hey get excited and if hey if and and celebrate with us if you if like thank you so much if you're giving us five stars on itunes it it means the world to us and like when you write those like comments um saying what a fun show like it it, like thank you so much like it is so awesome when we see that yeah um and it helps us a lot like helps us exactly any feedback like we really appreciate it if you ever want to write to us we've got an email it's all in the description if you're listening on youtube or soundcloud um yeah if if you if if you have friends who want to know what movies to watch tell them about this podcast you know we've got now an all right catalog behind us so well it's that's slowly building it's slowly building yeah our library's getting bigger so and obviously if there's ever a film that you want us to watch like we we did network because of a recommendation that we got so Uh, you know, we like, and we choose our movies on a week to week basis. So, oh, shout out to Trent for recommending. Yeah, work. that like, was thank you so much, Trent, because like that was one of the best movies I've ever seen. Yes, so. that's one of my favorite. Film. Yeah, I, I don't know. Again, I, I'm I'm looking forward to next week because I think we should discuss what we, we should we should do a retrospective next week as yeah, well. I think, uh, in, in addition to reviewing a film, we should like do a retrospective on the past ten. Yeah, because the more I think about Network, the more it's creeping like up right. in terms of my favorite films. All yeah. right, well, let's let's do that, buddy. Yeah. All Sounds right. Good. All Until right. then. Now, now, Brenton, get, what? get get back to building your bridge. How did how did you get in here? I am a British person, and I deserve my human rights to be to be respected. Oh, back to building it, boy. You have no Geneva rights in here. <laughs> back to the bridge on the river Kwai. Never. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>